Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King and I'm super excited about leading the world to Jesus. Today I have a special guest, Mac Barnes. He's done many, many crusades in the nation of Haiti. Brother Mac, thank you so much for being with me today. Daniel, it's great to be here. Thank you. So tell me some about your ministry and how you started doing crusades. Well, I went to uh, Brother DGS Dinekrin's School of Evangelism in 1986. He is the great evangelist from India who did massive crusades all over India. Right, and he had a school of evangelism, and when you went, he taught on all the gifts of the Spirit. So I operated all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1986 when I went to Madras, India for the School of Evangelism. So what are some of the things that you learned from Dr. Dinakaran in India? Well, uh, what I learned when I came home was I was operating under his anointing. And so I tasted all these gifts, but now I had to get them in my own ministry. So I had, I had a crusade in Brooklyn, then I had other crusades in New Jersey, and I became the leader of my church's evangelism team. And uh, I think one of the things that was really key was we always prayed in tongues for 30 minutes to an hour before we went out on the street. And by the time we got on the street, we had a smile on our faces that nobody could wipe it off. And so a lot of your ministry has been focused in the nation of Haiti. Tell me, what is it like to do crusades in Haiti? Well, my Haitian partner, Pastor Eddie Francois, said, Haiti's one of the only countries where black people want to listen to a white guy from America. And so I said, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> anyway, so we, uh, we would have crusades from Sunday to Sunday, eight days. And uh, we- That's a lot of preaching. So is it morning and evening or? Uh, well, the meetings were in the evening, but in the morning we would have a pastor's conference for two days. Uh, there would be a Sunday school teacher's conference and um, there'd be a, a Sunday school crusade Sunday afternoon. And so we had a lot of things going besides the evening meetings. But there were about 70 people on the crusade team to put these events together. Well, that's a, a huge team of people to coordinate a crusade. H how many people would come to a typical crusade? Well, we usually had five or 10,000, sometimes 20 or 30,000 people a night. Now, in, in the nation of Haiti, often there are demonic manifestations. Tell me some about that. Well, people in Haiti worship voodoo. And I mean, if you go to the airport, they got voodoo art on the walls in the Port-au-Prince airport. And so they think of voodoo as just a ordinary religion, but it's not, it's devil worship. So they worship demons, they worship devils, and they have a lot of bad outcomes. But uh, when we would have crusades, people would fall down manifesting demons. And when that happens, the ushers would pick them up and carry them to a certain spot where uh, the Christians would then cast out the devils and the people would get up uh, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit and, and uh, go back to live their normal life. If a demon manifest, manifests, how can a Christian cast out the demon? Jesus gave his disciples power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal the sick. And that's not one scripture. That's about, oh, it's at least, there's over a hundred scriptures that say that we have authority over demons. And in addition, there's an angel or angels standing right with you all the time. And when you t tell a demon to go to the abyss, those angels are what give you the victory over the demon. And so you take authority over the demon in the name of Jesus. You command your angel to take them to the abyss. And what impact does that have on the person who, who has opened up the door to the devil? Well, it has a tremendous impact because uh, 
they're in bondage. They're not free at all. You know, they may think that, oh, I think the devil sounds really cool. You know, I might, uh, I might be able to get uh, an advantage over some enemy of mine. But soon they find out that they're enslaved. It's like joining the mob. You know, you commit one crime and then they say, well, if, if you tell on us, we're going we're gonna to tell on you for that crime you committed. So you're, you're like, you're in this for life. And uh, so these people are in bondage. And when they get free, it's incredible, you know, how, how good they feel. And you just see the look on their faces, the smile, the tears. They are just so thrilled to be free. John 10.10 10 says the thief, Satan, comes to steal, kill, and to, to, to destroy. So anytime you open up a door in your life to the devil, he comes in and starts to steal. He starts to kill. He starts to destroy people's lives. But Jesus says, I've come to give life and life more abundantly. So give me some testimonies of some of the miracles that you've seen Jesus do in Haiti. Well, if, if people go to a voodoo priest, for instance, to get healing, what will happen is they'll have a little complaint like a cough and the, the demon, the voodoo priest will give them a big demon and the big demon will tell the little demon, get lost. And so the person thinks, oh, my cough is all better. I got healed by the voodoo priest. But what they don't realize is they now have two demons, minimum. Then the bigger demon is just letting the little demon, you know, be quiet for a while. And uh, then the person realizes, man, I got, I got big problems now. You know, and now I got a backache and arthritis and I still have a cough. So uh, that's how people get what do you want to call it, sucked in to this. But when people get set free, they're just so thrilled. I remember one girl, uh, she told me she used to run around her neighborhood naked. And uh, when she got free, the smile on her face. I think we might have some of those demons here in America. They just uh, appear a little bit differently. <laughs> yeah, when, when she got free, the smile on her face, I said, that, that smile would keep me coming to Haiti for the next two years, just seeing that smile once. And that was, yeah, she had an incredible joy. Now you said that over the course of your ministry, you've had the opportunity to operate in all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. How can someone begin to activate the gifts of the Holy Spirit in their lives? Okay, well, one thing you can do is go out on a limb. So if you want to activate the gift of prophecy, it's best to start in a small group. Like if we, I used to go to this home meeting at, at a Christian bookstore uh, called Noah's Ark in Staten Island. And uh, I, I started to prophesy there. And it took a little, uh, what's the right word, guts, to stand up and say, the Lord is telling me this. But, uh, and then I remember our church had a meeting with two other churches. So there were three pastors, three churches, big crowd. And the Lord said, I got a prophetic word. And I go, Lord, I'm not giving a prophetic word in this crowd. This is too big. Anyway, so the Lord told me, uh, then just stand up. So I stood up and he goes, turn right. I turned right. I got to the aisle. He says, turn left. By the time he finished giving me instructions, I'm standing right in front of the speaker at, at his podium. And he goes, what are you here for? Oh, I have a prophetic word. So I gave my prophetic word. God will help you. God knows exactly what you're going through when you try to operate spiritual gifts. And he will give you the assistance you need to get into it. So tell me some stories about how some of the, the other gifts have manifested in your life. So we've talked about uh, seeing spirits, discerning it. That would be discernment of spirits. Right. You've experienced that in Haiti. Uh, you just talked about giving a prophecy. Uh, I assume you've seen lots of healing miracles. So you've seen gifts of healing. Uh, what about some of the other gifts? What, how have you flowed in those? Well, let me talk about healing. Uh, we were having crusades in Haiti, but we weren't getting very many people healed. And a young minister, I'm talking 
the age of my children, younger than my children, uh, came to me and said, can I go to Haiti with you? And at the end of the service, he had all these words of knowledge for healing. And so he, he the whole, like the last 45 minutes, he's just given words of knowledge. People are getting healed and he's praying for them. And when I got off the stage, I go, that was great. I want what you have. And he goes, well, go to this school. And uh, it's, it was called the School of Healing by Randy Clark. And, and um, so I get back to the United States. I get on the computer. I find out there's one in two weeks in Colorado. I live in New Jersey. And there's one in six months somewhere on the East Coast. So I said, Lord, which one should I go to? And he goes, what have you been fasting and praying for? And I've been fasting coffee for 18 months because I wanted to get more people healed when I prayed for them. And I go, okay, Lord, I'm going to the one in two weeks. You got me. <laughs> so I have been getting so many more people healed since I went to that course on the healing school. Can you give me a testimony of an individual who was healed? Okay, so uh, we were praying for people. We, we had a medical clinic, and we went to Haiti with, with about 24 people, and a bunch of them are nurses and a couple of doctors. And I'm not anything medical. So we were working the line of people waiting to see the doctor. And uh, we prayed for this lady, and, and her ear opened up. So she was deaf in one ear. And we prayed for her, and her, her ear opened up. So that was that was a great miracle. That's awesome. Could you pray for our listeners sure. that they would be able to cast out demons okay. and that they would be able to start to, to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Father, I thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I give you praise, honor, glory for all of your provision. Lord, I thank you that you are... A, a wonderful teacher you you teach us in the way that we need to learn and each one is different each person has different things they need to learn in a different order but you teach all of us and you're so patient and so kind and so gentle so now Lord I declare that everybody listening to this broadcast can operate spiritual gifts and yes they have to learn yes they have to start yes they have to begin but it will be so easy once they get over their, uh, what shall we call it, insecurities and just step out and start to do it. In Jesus' name, let it be done. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. Bless okay. you. God bless you, Daniel. Good to be with you. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.